So today I, I'm going to give you a part two of what I shared just about the 24 or 36 hours ago. So this is part two. So I, I just recollect what I shared with you on the theme for 2022, moving forward to take the future. So everybody say, move forward to take the future. One more time. Those of you online as well. One more time. Everybody say, move forward to take the future. So this is a theme God has given to us and it is loaded. So I shared with you at the watch night service, okay, this is, you heard it so many times already, all right, that there are three postures that we have to prepare ourselves to cross over. So at the watch night service, we have not crossed over, ma. But we need to prepare ourselves like the children of Israel on Joshua chapter 3, and they need to do three things. I just go through it very quickly and then I move on because I got a lot to share with you this morning. They need to consecrate. Three days, Joshua was told, tell the people, consecrate themselves for three days for tomorrow you're going to cross over into uncharted territories. You've never been there before. Does it speak of this year? None of us have been where we are now. And we don't know what lies ahead. So the Lord says, prepare yourself. And only that. Please be convinced that the Lord is going to be with you. Why? Because as you prepare yourself and cross over, look, look at the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God. So we did communion just now. It's more than just an emblem, you see. Jesus is here. He's alive, understand? Even though we remember an event that was over 2,000 years ago, but we remember till He comes, right? So He's here. The presence of God as we cross over into the new year. But we need to trust, my friend. We need to trust in Joshua chapter 3, the, the river Jordan was at its flood. If I were the children, two and a half million of them, and I look at the river Jordan, I'd be frightened, right? I'd be, I'd be afraid. But no, do not be afraid. Again and again, do not be afraid. Just trust. And I told you to trust in three things. Trust God, trust the leadership, the priests, and trust the process. And I also gave you the verse in Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19, who says, forget the former things. Don't only let go. Look up. Don't only let go. Look forward. Because God is going to do a new thing. Don't dwell on the past. See word see. I like this verse because I'm going to focus on the word see. 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 It's not look, see, look, see, touch and go type. We'll see. No. It's the same word. Guess what? In Joshua chapter 1. See. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert, streams in the wasteland. Wow. Wasteland, no? A fresh flowing stream. Desert, no. God will make a way where there is no way. So you think that you are in the cul de sac. You think you are at a dead end. No. Banish the thought. Why? Because God is going to make a way where there is no way for you this year. You know, one of the amazing highlights I felt at the wash night service was the video. I think that this year's video is probably one of the best. Do you agree with me? Come on, let's give God a clap offering for our Mac team. You know, done so well. You know why? Because it was almost 20 testimonies, one after the other in one-liners. And we hear people uh, who are cured of eczema, found a job, you know, and, and, and a few 
many salvations, right? And they, they were baptized as well. And, and so I just want to show you a picture of December last year when we had a couple of water baptisms, you know. And, and all in all, last year we had 98 salvations, 71 water baptisms. Isn't it amazing? Hey, MCO, you know. People still get saved. Tells me that God is in the house. God is in the house. So what must we do now? To transit and to transform. We don't only cross the river, but there is something that has to change. And I remembered Pastor Isaac and Pastor Lindy mentioning we become a person of a different spirit. We cannot be the same. We become a person of a different spirit. Like Caleb and Joshua. If you don't have a different spirit, you perish 40 years. Wow. What do we need? To transit and to transform. Three things. Four things. Number one, we need to gaze on God. I highlight the word see. It's quite prominent in, those, in that chapter. So in Joshua 3, verse 3, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, I, I, you see, it's not only the ark of the covenant, it is your God. There is a warmth to it. It is not a remote control God. No, He is with you. Amen? And He said, and the priest, in other words, the leadership, when you see the leadership who are carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Joshua 3 verse 11. See, gaze, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth and will go into Jordan ahead of you. The word see is powerful. It is more than just look, see, touch and go type. No, it is to gaze. It is to look steadily and intently. In other words, just look at it. Focus, focus, focus. So can I share this with you, church, physically as well as online? You're watching from your living room, your TV room. You know, you know um, yesterday, we have people from all over the world watching us. There was one guy from Ho Chi Minh City watching our online service and he even went to the altar call, no. And he said, pass a message to Pastor Chu. Send a pastor to Ho Chi Minh City. <laughs> Who knows? But it just tells me that, that, that people are, are coming in. And, and I want to say this to you, my friend. Don't only just cross over into the new year and bye-bye, everything forgotten as if business as usual. No, no. Focus on God. Keep gazing on the Lord. So, so what causes us to be distracted? Distractions, offenses, hurts, materialism, greed, circumstances, self-interest. And, and, and a lady came to me yesterday after the first service, says, Pastor, you forgot one thing. Conflicts. I say, you are right. Conflicts. Conflicts distract us. And many churches are distracted because of infighting. Not here. Let's be a warn and be alert. And never allow any of these six things to distract our gaze on God. The second thing that we need to do 
as we cross over to transit and transform, is we must do it together. Can't I do it alone? Can. But better together. Two and a half million people, you know. You know how many people are two and a half million, you know. May even be more, right? One by one they cross. Do you not think that even as they cross, they look after each other? Because, hey, the ground is wet one, no? And probably very soggy one, you know? Don't you think your children will be carried and that all the strong men will carry all the luggage and everything else? Come on, church. SIBKL. 4,000 of you physically and now over 12 to 15,000 online. We do it together. Everybody say together. together. One more time, together. together. You know, man, several years ago, when we had the theme for the year, we always used the word together. Am I right? So several years ago, we had together we follow Jesus. And the last two years, what was the theme? Absolutely. Together we overcome. So could it be that this year we say, together we cross over? Okay or not? Let's do it together. Togetherness also implies not only unison, but unity. This is very important. And I want to stress this. As the father of the house, nothing hurts me more than to see my family divided. You are a father, you know what I'm talking about, right? Never. It hurts me. Preserve the unity of this church at all costs. And I say this with a certain degree of trembling because I know of churches in the Klang Valley that as I speak now are split. Follow this person, follow that person. I'm standing, man. So as I BKL, can I implore you, do not allow anything or any person to divide us. It's okay with you. So everybody say together. together. One more time. Together. together. And the third ingredient out of four that we need to cross over, to transit and transform, is there has to be a generational anointing. I'm not even saying a generational awareness. A lot of churches are very aware of generations, but they don't have the anointing. In SIPKL, we are not only aware, but we have the anointing. I tell you why. In this passage, one portion stood out for me. And it is in Joshua chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 9. A very unusual thing God told Joshua to do. And I'll explain to you the implication behind this act. And so Joshua called, called what? Together. It has to be, my friend. Together. The 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and then Joshua said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. And each one of them, this is a strange act. So each one of them are to take a stone from the middle of the Jordan, 
according to the number of the tribes of Israelites to serve as a sign. What sign? What kind of sign? It is a memorial. It is something that God wants them to remember and not to forget, like what we did just now. It's a remembrance. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? You tell them. You tell them what happened. You tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. In other words, before the presence of God. In other words, Every time you see the memorial stone, you know that God is in the house. Wow. So when they crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off and these stones are to be a what? A memorial to the people of Israel forever, generations to generations. Listen to me. Why do we want to build something that fades off after I'm not here? What's the point? Why do I want to do that? Many of you heard me say this. Pastor Lichu and I are not young. We are (laughs) middle-aged. But it's time to transcend. Not tomorrow, but over a period of next few years. And I want to say that In this period of transition, we want to build something that will last. So the generational anointing is very important. Do you know that one of the DNAs of SIBKL is what? Generations, man. So we have three markers. We have three DNAs. And you, you, and you need to know this, friends. If, if, whether you are on site or whether you are online, if you, if you love this church, if you want to belong to this church, you, you better know what are we made of. What is our DNA? Number one, spirituality. We value spirituality. We value the word. And I'll share with you in a short while what it means. We, we are a spiritual church. We are not an NGO. We are not a Rotary Club. We don't focus on programs. No. Or personalities. No. So when people tell me, young people follow personalities more than the word, I say it's wrong. That is a wrong focus. Even for my young people, I tell them, follow the word. Because if you don't follow the word, the best of men are still men at best. Men can fail you. I can fail you. But the word of God can never fail you. You have to teach the young people the word, the word, not the hero. Sama Sarawak and Sama Nanjong is also a d- DNA. You've heard me speak so many times if you're here. Why? Because we believe that the future of Christendom and Christianity in this country hangs on our native brothers and sisters. Do you, do you agree with me? Come on, if you agree with me, say loud amen. amen. Those of you online, join me. If you agree with me online, say a loud Amen. So God has given SIBKL the, 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 the mantle as well as a mandate. And we will be faithful to it. It's our DNA. And the third DNA, guess what? It's generations. SIBKL is a generational church. In other words, all ages matter. So I say to the young people, hey, man, we believe in you. 
I, I believe in you. Pastor believes in you. Okay? Uh, uh, Pastor Lee Chu believes in you. Okay? We, we, we want to set you guys to win one. We want to make sure that, that, that you have the best, you have the best teaching, our kids zone and, and so forth and all our generational ministries. We, we, we want to give you sh- sh- uh, the, 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 the wings to fly. We set you up to win. But also, I want to say to the older folks, hey, you are not forgotten. You still matter in this church. So people tell me, Pastor, in this transition, uh, old old people forgotten already. uh." No, no, no. A thousand times, a zillion times. The young people here are very good. They honour you. They respect you. All generations have a place in SIBKL. Come on, let's give God a clap offering for that. Whoa! So everybody say transition. One more time. Everybody say transition. Everybody say transformation. One more time. Loud and clear. Those of you online as well. These are the two key issues even as I cast vision for 2022 and beyond. All right. There are two key issues that you remember and you remember and you remember that will take place in this church. Number one. Everybody say transition. Everybody say transformation. Thank you. Praise God for you. (laughs) There was a young child speaking. Whoa! Even the children believe in it. Isn't it amazing? So how do we transform? I'm going to use the rest of this sermon telling you how SIBKL not perhaps uh, will transform in the next two to five years beginning this year. Transition, transformation. In August last year, the leadership of this church spent almost two months grappling, brainstorming together with a group of people. And we came up with a document of almost 140 pages long called a Strategic Blueprint Development of SIBKL for the next two to five years. Why is this important? The world has changed. We cannot do church the old way. Everything has changed. So if you are smart, and I am smart, and all of us are smart, act smart, law, work smart, law. So there are five strategic shifts in the next two to five years, beginning this year. Number one. There will be an organizational shift slowly but surely beginning this year intentionally, deliberately to our next generation leaders. Older folks, I already assured you, huh? so don't panic. Okay, don't panic. We have to do that. So the older ones will still be there. You'll still be valued one. Okay? It's not that I'm useless. No. So don't even think like that. So if you hear any older folks do like that, you give a kick. <laughs> no, I told you how many times already. How many times more you want to say to you? But it's time for us to hand over to the younger ones. But it is not immediately. So what happens is that now in the next phase and era of SIBKL, the role of Pastor Lee Chu and I, having identified a group of young people, we will now coach them, tutor them, equip them, train them. 
like a football coach. Previously, as an SP, I direct them. But now, I coach them. So that when the time comes, they are ready to take over. I was trained as a gynecological surgeon in Edinburgh by some of the best surgeons in the UK. When I entered into the training scheme as a senior house officer, after my housemanship, don't know much on my. So what happens is that my consultants do. I just watch, and then later on they do. I assist, and after a couple of years or two or three years of training, then they feel that I'm okay. I do. They assist. And then after four or five years, I do, they watch. And before I came back to Malaysia, I do, they sleep. <laughs> Why? I'm good enough. This is going to be what's happened in the next two or three years. Pastor Biju and I will coach them. One step. At a time, until such time when they take over, and Pastor Lichu and I will go on a long holiday. <laughs> Let's give God a clap of praise. Are you with me, friend? Do you resonate with me? Say amen, amen, lah. Say something. Amen, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, not yes or not. It's, it's a very eerie silence, you know. Oh, true or not, Pastor? Come on. Uh, are you okay with me? Those of you online, I can hear you in Bangsa. <laughs> the second shift is content. In the next two to five years, we have to come out with not new content, innovative content to attract the people. No. It is not the trend. It is the truth that attracts people. Correct or not? Am I right? Trend come, trend go. True stays. So the content is the word of God. You see? So SIBKL is very well known now for our public teaching. And so it will continue on even after I go. So last year, we did all these things. Seven letters of the churches, first and second Thessalonians, Jude, Zechariah, and we did Revelations and Daniel. We had a feast. But this year is no different. So we do Joshua. In the first quarter. And then we're going to do the Deuteronomy, the second law, Deuteronomos, the second law. And then we go to the book of Judges. And then, guess what? We're going to study the book of Isaiah. I don't know about you. I don't know the book of Isaiah as well. But I want to know. Wow. So this year, will also be a wonderful year of studying the Word of God. If you love the Word of God, you'll stay. La. You don't love the Word of God, well, go to a church with tons of programs on that. Because it's worth, yeah. Not only the word, uh, prayer. S-I-B-K-L, unapologetically, is a praying church. We pray. And so like what I shared at the Watch Night service, we want to begin January, begin the first month of 2022 in prayer. And it already started yesterday. 21 days, we're going to have a time of fast and pray. Early morning, beginning tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., right until Friday, the first week of 2022, we're going to have an early dawn prayer altar. Come in. Put on your alarm clock. Online. It's all online. Huh? Pray before you go to work. I don't know whether school has started or not. Bring your children to pray before they go to school. And then on Saturday, on the 8th of January, we're going to have an anointing service. For whom? For children, for family. Why? Because over the years, we have found out that when we anoint your children, it's nothing special about our hands, you know. It's going to be all online. They do well. They are safe. We anoint families. 
Don't you want that? So set aside Saturday, 7.30. And I was telling, do you know that over the last year we had people scoring straight A's? A stars, you know, for O levels. A stars for A levels, you know, entering Cambridge and so, so forth. Look, and graduating with flying colours. Wow. Why do we do this? We want the best for you. Night altars and then 24-hour prayer meeting. Listen to me very carefully. Spirituality is key. The third paradigm shift is fundamental. Digitalization. This is a term uh, that probably just came up more and more in vogue in the last year or two. You know. Why? Uh? Because it's different. You know, at the Watch Night Service, I show you these statistics. Do you know that ever since we started the online service, we have more church members online virtual than we have people physically? Now, how many people are here? 400? Yesterday was 400. How many people can come physically now? Even then, out of 4,000 physical members, only 800 can come every week. But do you know that there are anything between 12 to 15,000 people outside there as I speak are logging into the church service? The entire facade and face landscape of church has shifted and it's absolutely foolish if you do not cater for these people. How? Digitalization. Mark Weeble wrote a book called Fishing on the Other Side, a guide to bring the church into the digital age and this is what he says. He says we need to grasp and grab on today's technologies and social media as a means by which the good news of the gospel of Jesus may be spread. Pastors and churches can no longer avoid the social media because they are not sure what to do or where to start. No, we must bridge the gap between the church and the digital world. But there are certain characteristics. Just to whet your appetite. Of this what Pastor Philip Lin and I call digital expats. Number one. If you ask them uh, which church you are, Anglican, which church you belong to? Methodist. But for the last two years, they locked into SIP. But they don't say they belong to SIB1, no. They still belong to the Methodist Church, but they have no more connection with them. Strange, oh? So strange, right? And not only that, they even tie to the church. And not only that, they also participate in our programs, in our CE programs. Why? Because now they grow. They grow. And we have... 12,000 minus 4,000, 8,000 of them outside, you know. They belong still to SIPKL. Digitalization is fundamental to the new norm. This is the way to go, to move forward, to take the future. You agree with me or not? You agree with me? Give God a good clap offering. Amen. But you say to me, Pastor, hiya, especially the older ones, uh, terrible, uh, SIBKL, uh, now uh, high tech ready, uh, uh, I, I don't even know how to press the button uh, now, how, I'm gone, uh, I'm finished, uh, you, you don't care for me, uh, uh, you, you've lost the, your, your, your personal touch already, uh, uh, that's why, what about me, what about me, what about me? Listen, can I affirm you again and again, we can go high tech, but we have not lost our soft touch. People still matter more than programs. 
I can assure you this, my friend. Listen to me very carefully. If we do not do this way, we will be extinct. We will be irrelevant. But going on this way, so the fourth big shift in our blueprint is still Christ-centered, people-focused. We, so there are three groups of people that we have, we have zeroed in, that we want to focus in the next two to five years. Number one, you. The members of SIBKL, we have not forgotten you. So what do we do? We encourage you to, to be a disciple. Give How? Go to a cell. See? Connect yourself to a cell. Very important. And, and then we, we, we go to what we call my spiritual journey because discipleship is a journey. And so what we do, you'll hear more of this in the a, in a, in a coming weeks. We have this MSJ, all right? Not MSG, is it? MSJ, my spiritual journey. What is it? It means it takes you just to show that we have not forgotten the personal touch and you, all right, even though we go high tech, we still have soft touch, all right? So you, you come into I visit and then I belong. So you, we, are, you, we still have DNA uh, 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 T's, you know, we still have membership, you know, we still have it. And then after that, you might want to commit to a cell. Or, so I commit. And then after that, you want to grow in this church, right? You want to follow our programs and follow our Isaiah teachings, you know what I mean? And then after that, my prayers for you is one of these days I lead. So everybody say, I visit. Loud, everybody, left of left to right, front to back, top to bottom, and those of you online as well now. Everybody follow after me. I visit, I belong, I commit, I grow, I lead. That's my prayer. And the other group of people are the Sabah Sarabha, I shared with you already, and the poor. We will never forget the poor. You know, when, 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 can I have the worship team up? When, when I, when Paul spoke to the Ephesian elders in his farewell message to them on the way to Jerusalem, Paul told them, I will not see you again. So whatever Paul said was critical. You read Acts chapter 20. And towards the end, Paul said, Help the poor. Help the weak. The B40s. Whether they are at flood or not flood. We will help them. So these are the four, five things. In SIBKL's two to five years strategic blueprint. Join me. And let's cross over together. And let me close with a fourth essential. Not only do we need to gaze on God, not only do we need togetherness, not only do we need a generational anointing, not awareness. Huh? But we need gumption. Gumption. What is gumption? Gumption is more than just raw courage. Gumption is the ability to decide what is the best thing to do in a particular situation, in a changing world in a lot of revolving moving parts and to do it with energy courage and determination it is a spirited and a shrewd initiative and resourcefulness we need gumption gumption not just courage so in Joshua chapter 3 and 1 the word is used courage and translated as courage God said many times Joshua 
have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. I say this to you as I BKL. Do not be frightened. Do not be terrified. Because the Lord our God is going to be with us. Amen? And all that we need to do is to be strong and very courageous. It needs gumption. And we will cross the river together, my friend, together. Hallelujah. Well, will you just close your eyes and pray? Pray with me. Oh, hallelujah. Father, Father, Father God, I have offloaded with the best I know how to your people in this very, very important phase of our church. A phase when we transit and transform as well. It is in the crossing over that Lord we know we need you more than ever before. In a moment of quietness and silence before God and those of you online as well. I sense in my spirit that many of you having heard this message, something in your spirit rises up. Courage comes back again. Faith comes back again. There's a renewed sense of, of dedication. There's a renewed sense of commitment. You know, yesterday, so many people have told me, Pastor, do you know that I, 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 I committed myself and he was watching it online. I encourage you. At the beginning of this year, as we face the uncertainties ahead of us, will you put your hands in the hands of God and believe that God will never leave you? Do not be terrified. I am with you. As I BKL, I am with you. I want to pray for some of you. That this year may be a year of challenges for you and your family. I want you to surrender. I want you to yield. I want you to say to God, God, I need your wisdom. I need your courage. I need gumption. If you want me to pray for you, you stand. By standing, you say, Pastor, pray for me. No one looking around. Whether you're on the floor here or in the balcony, you stand. By standing, you say, God, I surrender my family to you. I surrender my work to you. I surrender my career to you. I surrender my relationship to you. Those of you online, you might stand or you just raise your hands. God sees you more important than I see you. Let me pray for you. You know, there's a wonderful presence of God in the house, you know, honestly speaking. I'm not saying this because I... I I know that right from the moment we worship, you know, right now, God is here. We have taken communion. So I'm going to wait for another 10 more seconds and then we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you see these people, so many standing in front of you across the auditorium and those at home as well. Lord, you see their hands. You see them standing before you, God, wherever they are. Whether they are in the Klang Valley or in Malaysia or even outside in other countries. Father, we know, we know, we know that you are, your promises never fail. You, what you said, you will do. And this year, Lord, even though we have so much uncertainties for our lives, for our ministry, for our nation, for our church, for our businesses. We know that we are safe in you, Lord. 
You will give us the wisdom for our lives, for our, to manage our children, to manage our families, to manage our health. And so God, I want to pray and bless all these dear people standing before you today in faith. In trust in you We trust you God We trust your word We trust you That you will take us Across the raging waters And we will cross over We will cross over And 2022 Will be a wonderful year Thank you God Thank you just spend a moment of quietness before God will you do that God is here let's not rush in we still have time hallelujah oh ramanda kata da 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 shokori ra kata da 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 sike oh ramanda kata da 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 shokori ra sinda mandana da da will you pray to God wherever you are now and tell him what you want you tell him your needs when you do that, every one of you. Whether it's for your children, or whether it's for your businesses, whether it's for your health, whether it's for I don't know what it is that concerns you. Whether it could someone who's sick in your family, I don't know. You know, would you do that? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Would you tell the Lord that? Would you do that? Every one of you, whether you are here or whether you're online, will you tell the Lord if you're online? You know, maybe you want to hold hands with your spouse and pray together for your family. Go to God. Seek the face of God. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves. Shall we do that? Let's consecrate ourselves and set ourselves apart for God. Amen. Oh, Ramanda Kata. You do that, church. Wherever you are, give a little bit of time. Tell the Lord what is in your heart. Tell the Lord what is in your heart. Oh, Ramanda Kata. Da, 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 da. Come on, God is in the house. There is no embarrassment, nothing at all. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Ramanda Kata. Da, 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 da. Shokore da, Kata. Da, 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 Sunday. Oh, Ramanda Kata. I see families praying. Oh, I see families praying. It's such a wonderful sight, you know. Such a wonderful sight. You know, one of the most wonderful sights of the Malaysian United Firewall was to see families worshipping the Lord together. Oh, hallelujah. God will bless you, my friend. God will bless you. You will be safe. Because if God is with you, who can be against you? Who can be against you? There will be reconciliation again. There will be restoration again. There will be love, love again. There will be laughter again. Amen. Wow. And salvation will come to your household. Salvation will come to your household. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Ramanda Kata da 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 I'll stand should we do that let's close with this wonderful song hallelujah in the midst of the storm in the raging waters let's be still amen those of you at home follow after me in this prayer Lord I want to rededicate my life to you I want to recommit my life to you Lord, I want to love you more. I want to serve you more. I want to consecrate myself and my family to you. Help me, Lord. Bless my family. Bless my work. Bless my business. May 2022 be a wonderful year, Lord. So may the Lord bless you this day and keep you. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face, His wonderful face, to every one of you and your loved ones.
rest of your life and always give you shalom. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Now God's people say, Amen. Come on, let's give God a good clap offering.